Today, we're going to be looking at what is, in my opinion, one of the greatest, if not the greatest, chess game ever played. But before I get into the game, make sure to like and subscribe. I release weekly content, and you wouldn't want to miss out. Anyways, enjoy the video. This game was be played between two grandmasters, Grandmaster Karyakin, who played as white, and Grandmaster Anand, who plays as black. Both are one of the world's best top players, with Grandmaster Karyakin ranked number 16 with a FIDE classical rating of 2757, and Grandmaster Anand ranked just below at number 17 with a FIDE classical rating of 2753. So they are only four rating points away. It just shows how even matched this game is, but in the end, one player comes out on top. Let's get into the game. This game starts out with a Sicilian defense, as we can see with e4, c5, knight f3, d6, d4, c takes, knight takes, knight f6, knight c3, and a6. These are all very common moves. Both players are just developing like normal. And we see a Sicilian defense and Ajdorf variation. This is one of the most common, if not the most common, variation on the Sicilian defense. And here, Grandmaster Karyakin plays bishop to e3, initiating the English attack, looking to play f3, queen d2, and queenside castle, and attack black. We see e5, knight b3, bishop e6, f3, bishop e7, queen d2, castles, and castles. So looking at this position, we can see that it's an opposite side castling game. White has castles to the queen side, black has castles to the king side. So both players are going to be looking to attack each other's king. In many ways, these type of games are like a race. Whoever can checkmate the other opponent first will win the game. And we can see why it is looking to play moves like g4, h4, g5, and h5, pawn storming on the king side. And we can see black is looking to play moves like b5, a5, a4, and b4, pawn storming on the queen side. However, first, Grandmaster Anand plays knight b to d7, looking to bring the knight to b6, and then later on in the game to a4 and c4. And immediately, Grandmaster Koryakin starts attacking g4, b5, g5. And in fact, here, Grandmaster Anand plays b4, a beautiful move saying, Grandmaster Koryakin, you can attack my knight, but then I will attack your knight back, and then attack your queen. So Grandmaster Karyakin moves his knight back, and Anand moves his knight back too. We see f4 breaking into the center, a5 and f5 followed by a4. The idea is if white plays f takes e6, there's a takes b3, and if you take this knight, there is b takes a2 and a1 checkmate is pretty much unstoppable. So, Grandmaster Karyakin plays knight b to d4, see e takes, knight takes, and b3. There's no really good response. If you play c takes, then the c file is open. If you play a takes, then the a file is open. So, Grandmaster Karyakin simply plays knight to b1, after which we see b takes c2, and knight takes c2. Now, Grandmaster Anand here can either play bishop takes a2 or bishop to b3. He chooses to play bishop to b3, after which we see a takes, a takes, and knight to a3. We see knight to e5, centralizing the knight. h4, rook a5, we can play queen to a8, and threaten sacrifices here, as well as the pawn on e4. And here we see the first big blunder of the game. Queen to c3. This move doesn't really do anything since the knight is protected twice and the rook is protected by the queen. We immediately see queen to a8, attacking the pawn here on e4, and threatening sacrifices against the knight on a3. And here is another big blunder, bishop to g2. We see a beautiful move by Grandmaster Anon. This is knight to c7. It looks like it's sacrificing knight, but the idea is that black can play rook to c8 afterward, take control of the c file, 
and have control of the A file. Grandmaster Koryakin says, give me that, takes the piece. Rook c8, as I mentioned earlier, sacrificing yet another piece. Bishop on e7. And we can see white's position is very dangerous. A file, C file, and a checkmate could soon follow with poor defense. See, knight to c4, the idea is if you do take rook a1 as mate, you can open up the a file even more. You see g6, and here, Grandmaster Anand can take in two places. He can take with knight takes a3 or rook takes a3, but he plays a beautiful quiet move, simply defending with h, h takes g6. We see f takes g6, knight takes a3, b takes, and rook takes, followed by g takes f7, and Grandmaster Anand's kingside safety is finally breaking down. We can see that both players have little to no defense of their king. And as I mentioned earlier, whoever checkmates the other first will end up winning the game. We see king h7, followed by promotion to a knight, looking to distract the rook on c8. And now Karyakin's king can go to the c file. We see queen takes f8, believe it or not. This is the only way to stop checkmate threats on the a file, sacrificing the queen. Rather than just resigning, the idea is that White can maybe hold the game because they have a rook and two pieces, the two bishops, for the queen. However, rather than playing queen takes f8 immediately, Grandmaster Anand plays rook to a1, we see king to b2, and rook to a2. The idea is that if you do move the king back to b1, now Grandmaster Anand will take the queen. And the rook is now on a2 rather than a3. A slight change, but one that is important enough to win the game rather than having an equal position. However, Grandmaster Karyakin here plays king to c3, a blunder that gives Grandmaster Anon a forced checkmate sequence in six moves. I'd recommend you guys pause the video and see if you can find this checkmate sequence. It starts with queen to a5 check, king to d3, queen to b5, king to d4, rook to a4, king to c3, queen to c4, and Grandmaster Karyakin resigns on move 37 of the game. The idea is if you do play king to b2, there is rook a2, king b1, and queen c2 mate. If you choose to play king to d2, there's rook a2, king e1, and queen e2 mate. Both result in a checkmate in two, and we can see through quick attacks, no wasted tempi throughout the entire game, as well as incredible defense by Grandmaster Anand, plus a beautiful calculation in the end. We can see that he has won a very intense game. That's all I have for you guys today. Thanks for watching.